How can we dedicate the place? Through worship. 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 So important for us to realize this is another area Satan has hijacked the people of God in the church. Worship is not worship. Worship is not worship. <sighs> To worship is to adore. It is adoration. It is admiration. But we are products of a culture that says, How are you? And before they can say, Fine, you've already left. Huh? Am I right? Yes. So we, are, we don't even believe in asking that question. Because if you really meant that question, you would have stayed to listen to the answer. But before that person can answer, you already left. How are you? How are you? Huh? Oh, fine, thank you. You? You heard that? Fine, thank you. You? You don't even want to say, how are you? Fine, thank you. You? <laughs> we don't believe in that statement. We don't believe it. The number of times when people said, how are you? I've just paused and I realized that they've already gone to the next question. They never meant that. It's okay. You don't need to answer that. They never <laughs> meant that. They don't really care. This is a generation where thank you is just politeness. Thank you is not a statement they make out of understanding. Thank you is you being correct, politically correct. Thank you is you being polite. This is a generation where sorry is not just misused, but is abused. Sorry is a gun they hold at your temple to make you forget what they did against you. Because they're saying, when I say sorry, you better forget what I've done. Oh, but I said sorry. How come you're still upset? I said sorry. Your pain must disappear. I said sorry three times. What more do you want? As if sorry was this magic wand. You're not liking my sermon today. Look at the neighbor and say, this is deep. <laughs> So what has happened is that our generation has lost meaning of meaning. Our generation has lost meaning of meaning. So such a generation, what can we bring to the presence of God that is meaningful? We have lost meaning of everything. We give and we hold on to that. We give and we never give. Because we hold on to that. Did you, did you hear me? Yeah. We give, but we don't give it away. We give and then we go tell everybody what we have given. And we expect them to now come and serve us. Because you gave something little. What you don't know is that if you didn't give, God would have raised another widow to feed the prophet. Yes. So your privilege to give is a privilege. So what can we give to the Lord? It becomes very complex because our Lord is not anybody. Our Lord is the King of Kings. So what can we bring to a king that that is now considered worthy 
huh? I have I am blessed with many people giving me gifts but it does not mean that I am supposed to use it just because you got it does not mean it is my humility to receive it but it does not mean that i have to wear it some of you got my size wrong <laughs> i'm not complaining what i'm saying is that just because you gave it does not mean that the king has to accept it in order for the king to accept it it has to move him at his level so giving has not become giving until you give at his level at his level i'm going to give you a simple example is that okay yeah. this is something that you have to remember will you remember yes ah i will remember this day more than more than you <laughs> if you if you are paying attention let me hear an amen yeah. there's two people that gave in the new testament one person gave one year salary and the other lady she had two coins on her do you remember that and jesus was watching her she only had that two she emptied her bank first of my question is yet god did not go and say wherever this gospel is preached they will talk about you also <laughs> think about it please i'm highlighting you small details one woman takes an alabaster jar now this was not all her possession unlike the other lady other lady gave her everything yet the level at which god was moved to us god appreciated it but it did not move him to the level at which the other lady when the other lady did it something happened he said wherever this gospel is written they're going to be talking about you also in other words god attached his name to her story ay 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 so we have to consider that and say what is the difference between both one pastor did it out of faithfulness she said i am a woman of principle i have to give god i only have two cents it doesn't matter i have to give the lord everything that i have and jesus caught it yeah it doesn't miss his eyes it caught his attention but that was done out of principle but the other woman she was not merely following a principle for her she did that out of a revelation for her that was not an option for her that was worship for her that was the expression of her soul cracking on the floor before her lord that was not just an act of obedience that was her reflection of her spirit her body her soul being poured out before the lord child of god that moment moved god that moment please understand she didn't give all her possessions she only gave one years of a salary that was still a lot but the other lady gave everything everything that was all what she had so what was the difference one did it because she said this is the correct thing to do the other one did it because she was in love with the lord 
she did it out of a revelation she did it out of her admiration it was out of her adoration it was so passionate she was driven by it she was not embarrassed about it everyone in the room was judging her everyone in the room didn't just judge her everyone in the room even judged jesus saying what kind of man of god is this he should have known this lady this is the hey, she's a sus eh uh, if you don't understand that our generation knows sus is suspect eh uh, see now i've taught you some new lingo welcome to my generation eh uh, this is the ah pastor is not stopping eh uh. Ah Jesus didn't stop her. The one who sees a heart. My goodness. What can you bring to the Lord that will move his heart? People of God, we go to church every week. We are in the presence of the one that can change our destiny in a snap. Huh? We are in the presence of the Lord that can change our destiny in one second and yet look at the body language of you sitting in his presence ha huh? your body language of the sitting in his presence what is your posture her posture she calculated it she practiced it she ran through it she thought of it all the way from a house she thought and ran through i should do this i should break it like this maybe i should kneel first and then break it maybe i should break it and then kneel she was intentional about her offering she said but nobody does it ah, who cares if nobody does it oh but but they might who cares she cut out every mind attack she had i said i must outdo myself that was not just accepted as an offering that was accepted as a sacrificial offering when the other woman gave it was accepted as a great offering but what this woman gave became a sacrificial offering so my question is we have this opportunity to come to the presence of god week after week yet we do what everybody is doing yet we have been faithfully giving faithfully singing faithfully clapping hands faithfully worshiping but yet that was not moving god enough let us do something that will move god i've i've shared this example many times but it is not enough i told about a woman that left her house 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. in the morning to reach the service that was at 10 am today we are blessed with cars but we just can't calculate that it takes 10 minutes to park your car and come in and we are late but this woman she calculated she said in order for me to reach there on time at 10 o'clock i have to leave home by 6 in the morning with two kids little kids she started walk she walked 3 to 4 hours in order to reach the church on time by the time she reached the church at 10 am with the first song being sung by the worship team the power of god hit her there was a tumor on her chest that disappeared while the first song was being sung i was only a little boy but i will never forget her scream i'll never forget her scream she was weeping screaming and everybody looked at her you know 
maybe she's repenting of her sins or something because those days you know when you cried it was because you were a big sinner but she was crying out of joy we have an opportunity come to the presence of god and receive something from the king of kings and the lord of lords and yet we remain same every single time you come to the presence of god is an opportunity for you to find favor with the king of kings yes you will see how esther she understood that where she prepared herself she soaked herself in perfumes for months for one moment did you hear that for months literally 6 months she took bathed in oils perfumed oils she bathed herself 6 months of preparation for one moment with the king not to make you feel bad but to make you think <sighs> how long did you prepare for today's service before coming how long did you prepare before you connected how long did you prepare how much did you anticipate what did you do to attract heaven to you that's a question can you imagine in our churches if we can have that preparation before the service we were so casual the clothes that we wear to the work is the same clothes that we wear even to church don't don't think me wrong are you following what i'm saying practically the day you come early you say i don't want to be late i have need to go directly wow i appreciate that i'm talking about intentionality I'm talking about taking 5 minutes and say lord i'm going to your presence i'm not going to church i'm going to your presence ah i'm not going to church i am going to ah, i'm not going to church i'm going to meet the king husbands you need to ask your wives are you ready to meet the king this is the king of glory you are sitting in the presence of the king of glory what level of attention do you give him when the holy word of god is is coming to you when you know that i is picking what level of reverence do you give him tell me why the king must stretch his scepter his rod of favor towards you tell me why he must not pass you by tell me why what have you brought to him what have you brought to him that he should favor you this way and be very proud about the two cents that we gave and we are expecting God to bless us with the two cents but that's not what moved my father father this week i want you to pray god give us grace give us grace to move your heart you come ready to meet with this god this god this god will not just meet you this god will change your life This God will not just encounter you. Hey, this God will release a blessing where there is no place to even keep it. 
your barn will overflow. You will have to go ahead and hire a new accountant. <laughs> because your first accountant won't be enough. Your second accountant will not be enough. Your third will not be enough. There is one such blessing where he will open the windows of heaven and he will pour out a blessing. Father, I pray somebody will have that grace to attract a window of heaven this week. Marosia. Somehow that your clapping will attract the window of heaven. Somehow that your tears somehow that your tears will attract the window of heaven. Somehow that generational demons that had been binding your family for generations will find a deliverer inside of you. Somehow that your cry will represent your father, your great great grandfather, your great 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 grandfather and your great grandmother. You are the answer to the cry of a thousand generation in your house, in your blood, in your family. Child of God, open your mouth and shout. Hello, hello, welcome again. Thank you for being part of this Revive Nations family. We appreciate all the partners around the world to help us to get this word to you. And I believe that as the word that you just received, that life is coming to you, solution is coming to you, wisdom is coming to you, restoration is coming to you. You're now able to hear the full sermons at the Shout You Matthew app, which is available both on Android Android and Apple devices. Subscribe to our social media platform and let us grow together. We love you and thank you once again for being part of this journey. Until next time, God bless and Shalom. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 